The question about the prohibition of cholov akum, milk produced by a non-Jew, is of course, is, is that prohibition there to avoid a certain reality? And if that reality can be avoided in some other way, that that prohibition can be suspended? Or is that prohibition universal, as most or many prohibitions by Chazal are? That is to say, universal. Always. They're always in place. But which is it in the case of, which is it in the case of uh, uh, Chalav Akum? What is prohibited? So many Achronim have posited that Chalav Akum is only prohibited by using milk from a non-Jew where there's a chance that it's likely that the milk will become mixed with other kinds of milk or other kinds of Tamei elements. And others say, others say no, that the milk is universally prohibited. Now, I'm not going to take sides on this matter because in spite of the fact that Rav Moshe Feinstein, Igris Moshe Yeridei Aleph, Volume Aleph, uh, Tshuva Menzai, in spite of the fact that Rav Moshe Feinstein was Mekel in his time, and he said, you can depend on the United States uh, Agricultural Authority or whoever was in charge, that when they told you you're getting milk from a cow, that that's what you're getting. And you don't have to have any doubts about whether something was mixed in or not mixed in. And so Rav Moshe kind of uh, made us all righteous, all of us who drank that kind of milk in any event, He made it seem to us that we were actually doing the right thing all the time. And especially when I was was a child, it was kind of impossible in the place that I lived in to get Cholab Yisrael. So that Rav Moshe solved this problem for us in a major and universal kind of way. In Eretz Yisrael, in Eretz Yisrael, the problem of Cholab Akum basically doesn't exist. Because the milk is all milked by Jews, from Jewish cows, so to speak. And even though from time to time there have been questions about additives, milk additives brought from Europe to, uh, to Israel, I think that today that's largely not the case. And even though powdered milk is sometimes brought in from Chutzla Aretz and therefore it's important to have the hechsher on the milk that you drink. Nevertheless, there are poskim who say that powdered milk is not included, etc., etc. So Rav Moshe was the liberalizing tendency in this matter. On the other hand, Hasidim, in general, were very much taken with the notion of Chalab Yisrael. So that both the Satmer Hasidim and the Chabad Hasidim determined that we should all be very careful about this prohibition. The Satmer Hasidim, of course, lived together in uh, several large uh, communities. And it was not difficult for them to get Chalav Yisrael for their own, for their own people. I would uh, point out that uh, the Breuer community also, I remember, had Chalav Yisrael, but they were also a insular community to a certain extent and didn't produce it for people like me who lived in southern Brooklyn. But the Lubavitchers, the Chabadnikim, since they've become uh, uh, the shluchim, the emissaries to the Jewish people, find themselves in all kinds of odd places, you know, from California to uh, Mongolia, and they need Chalav Yisrael because that's what they eat. And they manage to do it. How they manage to do it, I don't know, but I can tell you when I spent time in Russia. I was in Russia for a year as the head of the what was then the Steinsalz Yeshiva in Moscow. 
It was somebody who came three times a week and brought us milk. Uh, not just milk, brought us Chalab Yisrael. Chalab Yisrael means he went to a farm where there was a milking cow. He got the milk direct from the milking and he brought it to the customers that existed in Moscow. Of course, all of whom at that time were the Babich of Hasidim. And so we also had Chalab Yisrael even in, in Moscow, even though the first time I went to Moscow, um, I was certain to take milk with me from Israel. I brought containers. Of course, standing online at the immigration authorities, one of the containers burst, and I started bleeding milk for my suitcases. But for some reason, nobody was interested. I didn't understand why, but I didn't say anything. I just kept moving. And uh, that was how I was introduced to the Russian system of customs. Apparently, they didn't care if you brought milk, even if it spilled all over the floor.